are down to the fifth and final event at the 2021 Rogue Invitational Strongman Competition. And the battle for the top spot is between Martin Glitzis and Tom Stoltman. Thanks for joining us, everybody, here at Dell Diamond in Round Rock, Texas. I'm Sean Woodland with Lawrence Chalet. And Lawrence, we could not be set up for a more exciting finish right now. It's, it's as exciting as it can get. We've got the three last winners of World's Strongest Man the top two battling out is going to be one of the most epic and exciting stone battles we have seen in a long time. And this is how close it is on top of the overall standings. Martins Litsis leads Tom Stoltman by just two points. And then a great battle for third between Alexei Novikov and Mateusz Kieliszkowski. Just a half point separating the two of them. Brian Shaw and JF Caron looking to work their way possibly into the top Four. Event number five is sponsored by Go Ruck. Go Ruck believes our way of life in America depends on those who serve. And the more we support them, the stronger our foundation as a country will be. That's why Go Ruck donates 1% of annual top line revenue to various nonprofit partners who support veterans and first responders. So, our final event of the strongman. The stones over the hitching post. And our first athlete out will be Jerry Pritchard. We have a few exciting battles ahead. Very close between Rob Kearney, JF Caron, and Brian Shaw, all aiming to get in the top five. Kiliashkovsky and Novikov. Now, these are the two for me that could cause problems for the leading pack. Only a half point between the two fighting for third place, but they could disrupt the leading positions. Lysis has a two-point lead going into this. Tom Stoltman on paper, the favorite on stones, but Lysis is a fantastic lifter, and he gets to go out last. The big question for me is how do Kiliashkovsky and Novikov perform? If they put in a blisteringly fast time, which they are both capable of, we are going to be on our edge of our seats when we watch the last two athletes go. Jerry Pritchett up first, 275 pounds stone to start. No problem there, now on to 300. Good solid first stone there by Jerry. Pops it up on his lap and then drives through. No problem with the first two. Two minute time cap in this event as Pritchett steps up to 365. So they're not allowed to use any sticky tacky. You often see tacky used in stone events. You normally have the traditional Atlas stones in Strongman. These stones, no tacky allowed. Also, every stone is slightly different, so you've got to get a feel for, for these. They're, they're not balanced. You need to make sure you get the right feel, that you get the hands in the right position. First part is to get it up to your lap. That's his first goal here. Lift it onto his lap, then he will sit down, readjust the hands, and drive through the hips to place the stone over the bar. Richard has a minute left. Still working on, on that 365 pound stone. Fairly comfortable with the first two, but these stones get heavy fast. And when you're not allowed the tacky, you don't stick to the stone. These men sweat a lot. So if that sweat is on the hands, it causes a lot of problems there. Two stones there for Jerry Pritchard. He's got through the contest. Jerry Pritchett just never got any momentum here in this competition. He started with a seventh place in the elephant deadlift bars. He talks to Alexei Novikov, and then a tenth, a ninth, and then another tenth in the timber yoke and log medley, and two stones for him here to close out his competition. Yeah, Jerry will be back. He's a warrior. He's one of the he is one of the best strongmen in the world. Just not at 100 percent for this show, but he's got through it, and he can go away now. Build on his confidence, get his body feeling 100% for a big 2020 season. 22 season. Martins lead seeds, once again, is your overall leader. He leads Tom Stoltman by two points. So lead seeds just has to prevent Stoltman from beating him by more than two places in this event. And for more on the man known as the Dragon Martins lead seeds, let's go down to Kiki Dixon. Guys, I've been joking around with Martins throughout the competition. I said, hey, I need you to win an event so we can chat. And he's like, uh-uh, my goal is to take second place finishes all the way to the podium. And guys, it's working. He's coming into the final event ranked first overall. 
Martinez Leeds has yet to win an event, but he has one third and three seconds. So not a bad approach as he will be the last man out. Always knows where the camera is. We said at the start of this show, consistency is going to be key. He has been the most consistent athlete every single event so far. He's been in the top three, but he's a fantastic stone lifter and he'll want to finish this stone in these stones in rapid time it's interesting jumps on these stones so the first one 275 pounds then up to 300 pounds but then you have a huge jump from the 300 all the way up to 365 that third stone is going to cause these guys problems and then it goes to 400 pounds and the final beast 420 pounds and that hitching post is 50 inches high 25 feet long and Mikhail Shilikov will be up next. He comes in in ninth place overall. His best finish was seventh in the Wheel of Pain. That was the first event earlier today. He's just talking with the judges there, making sure he understands all the rules. Fairly simple rules on these. Pick the stones up, put them over the post in the fastest yeah. time. Pretty fun. So you hear the term read the stone, it's something that Dr. Bill, our friend Dr. Bill Crawford likes to talk a lot about. What exactly does that mean and how do you accomplish that in such a short amount of time? Yeah, you, you know, some athletes are very good at adapting and figuring things out quickly. Other athletes need to practice things time and time again. It's going to be the athletes that, that can just touch the stone and figure things out fast. And it's, it's a real natural ability to do that some guys they just can touch stones they can touch implements slight variations they feel it they adjust their hands quickly and then they'll move on to the next one someone like Novikov someone like Derek Poundstone was very good at that he could just work things out other athletes they like to be well trained and prepare and know exactly what they've got to lift so this is just throwing people off a little because the guys won't be able to train on these exact stones, whereas normally you have the round atlas stones, although it's a different set, you know they're round atlas stones, you've all got them to train on. Look there, each one's slightly different, not perfectly rounded, so just making sure your hands are in the correct position becomes vitally important. You need good hand strength, bicep strength, chest strength, just to lock into that stone, and then you're gonna pull the stone up to your lap, then you'll readjust your hands, and from there, you're driving through with the hips, a little bit like a clean on the log, same type of movement. Pushing the hips through so the stone stays nice and close, goes over the bar. <laughs> 10 seconds, and our next athlete will be out. Misha Shivlikov from Russia. Here goes Shivlikov stepping up to 275. 275 goes over nice and easy. I don't think the 300 will be a problem watching that. There we go, straight up. Drives through, rolls the stone up his chest. Nicely done. Now this is the big jump. This is the one that caught Jerry Pritchett out. Just using that tacky towel. Just, it's not like tacky that they normally rub onto their skin. It just gives them a tiny bit of extra grip. 365 now on this stone. That huge jump that you were talking about. He's watching that. He came up fairly high. I think he can do this. He needs to really lock in. Squeeze hard with the biceps. Really push those hands in. And there we go. He's got to get it onto his lap. If he can lap it, this stone will go over. Two-minute time cap on this event. So Shivlikov still has a lot of time here. And if he can finish this, it's going to be a solid finish for him. He just wants to try and keep climbing up the, the list. He's just not able to get it onto his upper quads. That's the minute to go, and you just see the, the red marks on his forearm, just how tough it is. To These stones, stones scar your forearms. They really do cut the forearm skin up. He's just starting to fatigue now. It was a good effort. The first two flew over. I thought he could get that third one. He gave it a good try. Just couldn't quite get it to the lap. He's still Thank smiling, though. Always. Mikhail Shilvakov, both he and Jerry Pritchett get through the first two stones, and then that 365-pounder proves to be the stopping point for them in this event through two of the eight athletes. 
final event, the 2021 Rogue Invitational Strongman Competition, the first time in the three-year history of this event that we have had a strongman component to it. And it has been a lot of fun to watch here over the last two days. I think there's a lot of CrossFit fans that have become strongman fans this weekend. The athletes have put on an incredible performance. Such fun characters as well. Even there, Shivlikov knowing he's not in his best form, but he's always smiling and performing for the crowd. And I think that's the thing that's so, that's so endearing about a lot of these athletes is like you said, even though they're banged up, they're injured, they, they want to perform for the fans and attendance. It means a lot to them to be able to come out there and, and put on a good show. Look, I know a lot of these guys personally, and they have come from doing shows in car parks with you know, their, their family watching and, mm -hmm. and maybe someone and their dog. <laughs> to, to be competing in this arena with this crowd alongside the CrossFit, it means so much to these athletes. They want to perform, they want to show what they're capable of, and they want to be back here next year. I guarantee you there's going to be a lot more stonework and log lifting and, and yoke carries going on in, <laughs> in the CrossFit community in the next couple of weeks. There's a bunch a, of nervous athletes yeah. there. Luke Stoltman will be our next athlete out. And Luke really isn't too far behind, you know, in that battle for fifth place. Just comes in at 17 points. Brian Shaw is the man who sits in fifth. Shaw has 22. Oh, buddy. These stones are replicating traditional Scottish stones. The Inver stone is what they're replicating. So you'd think, being Scottish, the Stoltmans will be looking forward to this one. Stones reset. It's going to be Luke Stolman who is out next. Steve Slater just surveying the equipment here, making sure everything is in its place. Rob Kearney is there in the Mohawk next to Luke Stolman and JF Carone, the man who sits in sixth place overall, 20 points. He won the opening event. On Friday, the elephant bar deadlift, he pulled 926 pounds. Then he had a ninth and a tenth, and then came back in the timber yoke lock medley and another solid finish, taking fourth place. That really got him back on track. Yeah, he's had an up and down contest, really dominated the deadlift. He will like to finish strong. He's not a bad stone lifter right, himself. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our third competitor. Uh, Luke Stolman will take to the floor. So from what we've seen so far, I'd expect Luke to go through the first two stones and no problem. It's that third stone, that big 60 pound jump that has caught the guys out so far. If he can get that stone, things will be looking good. For the Highland Oak. One minute for Luke Stolman. He's going to take a quick walk down here and just a quick glance at some of these stones. And he places that towel right where the first two men to go have needed it. And that's at that 365 pound stone. It really is a big jump. You know, you look at all the other jumps, a little smaller. 300 to 365, just catching them out a little. Hmm. 30 seconds. Luke Stolman in eighth place overall, 17 points. Best finish with the fifth place in the Wheel of Pain. Look at the size of those legs. <laughs> He's one powerful man. His leg is like a, an oak tree. <laughs> 10 seconds. So Luke Stoltman approaches the first time. 275. No problem for the big Scotsman. Now on the 300, and there's the 365 pound stone to his left. Easy. Stolman trying to become the first man to successfully put that over this 50 inch post. And, and he, he lifts lapped it. it. No problem to the lap. Over easy. Here we go. And now on to 400. Now things are getting interesting. This is good lifting by Luke. He coped absolutely fine with the 365. He can get this up to his lap. That's the first aim. It's getting heavy. It's getting heavy, it's 400 pounds. <laughs> getting heavy. <laughs> we got heavy to start. Two minutes.
for each competitor. So Luke still has a lot of time here. He's the first man to clear the 365 pound stone and reach the 400 pounder. He's asking the crowd to help him here. Luke is an athlete that loves a reaction from the crowd. Is it helping him? He's got to squeeze into that stone, really make sure those hands are sticking to it as much as they can. He's just adjusting it there, turning the stone, trying to get a different feel for it. He's turned it to a narrower portion now. And that's going to be it for you, Solomon. But he got really close on that second attempt to almost getting that into his lap. But Luke Stolman is our new leader. Can't emphasize how much harder lifting these stones are where they're not allowed to use the, the pine resin, the tacky, that we often see on Atlas stones. Stolman gets through the 365 pound stone and someone gets a free t-shirt. Lucky fan there gets Luke Stoltman's t-shirt. Probably fit about three people in that thing. <laughs> I remember competing against him in one of his first shows. He was no way near as big as this. He has slowly put on size and strength over the years and is now one of the top strong men on the planet. Luke Stoltman into the lead with the 365 pound stone successfully lifted. Take one more look at Luke Stolman. First man to get through three stones here in the final event. Absolutely flies through these first three. Very easy on stone number one. Very easy there on stone number two. This was the one that's caught a few guys out. He gets nice and low, squeezes in, straight up to the lap, no problem. Reassesses it. Front squats the way over. And then it's another big jump up to the 400. If anyone can lift this 400, this will be this will be in contention. If anyone can do all five, you know, the challenges that Roke have set, they're tough. Luke Stolman, our new leader, after three athletes have gone, seven men remain. And Rob Kearney will be up next. Kearney coming in and. Seventh place overall with 19 points. His best finish was a fifth place in the Elephant Bar deadlift on day one. Let's go, Tom! Luke having fun there with the crowd. And there is Rob Kearney talking things over with Steve Slater. Meanwhile, Martinez, Leeds, and Tom Stolman just sitting back and watching. Will be the last two athletes to go. There is the Dragon, the overall leader. With 35 points, two points up on Stoltman. This is an exciting and nervous time for a lot of the athletes, especially those athletes that are in contention for the win. They'll be keeping an eye on everyone's performances. Especially Martinez. He's the one that he doesn't have to win. He just has to stay ahead. So he's keeping an eye on him. You know, as long as no one does that last that last stone, he's going to be happy. He'll believe he's capable of doing all five. Martins can lose to Soltman in this event. He just can't by, lose by more than two points. And that'd be just by two spots. So if Soltman were to beat him and get someone else between himself and Martins, then that would be trouble for Lisi's. Rob's going to be feeling the pressure. He's ahead of Luke Stoltman by two points going into this event. He's seen Luke lift the third stone. Bob Kearney getting the crowd fired up there here at Bell Diamond. Hopefully they can help him through this event. I think these athletes are enjoying being under the spotlight. It's a great environment to be out there under the lights outside. It's, it's fantastic. It's a special atmosphere. 400 pound stone just staring at us there. Bernie, the fourth man to take on the fifth and final event here at the 2021 Rogue Strongman Competition. First time we've had a strongman competition here at the Rogue Invitational. 
I have a feeling it will not be the last. I hope not. These guys I know will be excited to come back. Ever since they found out they had this opportunity, they've all been training hard, looking forward to competing alongside the top CrossFit athletes. And here's Rob Kearney starting the stones off. No problem there with a 275 stone. About 300 pounds, that's going to go up and Nice over. and quick on the first two. 365 is next. Moving really well here. No problem there. Now to 400 for Rob Kearney. And that was a fast time for those three, so he's put himself in a good position. Now less than 20 seconds for those three stones. Two-minute time cap in this event. Not rushing himself. He wants to make sure these hands are in the correct position. And that's great there by Rob. Lifts the 400 pounds, no problem at all. And the crowd respond. 420, the final stone for Rob Kearney, looking to be the first man to get through this entire event. He has plenty of time, and the crowd is behind him here in Round Rock, Texas. Absolutely, this is one of our shortest competitors. He doesn't have the long wingspan of, say, a Tom Stoltman. He gets it up to his knees, just needs to hold it there. Re reposition the stone, he's trying to twist it on his knees. You can see how big this stone is. He can't get the arms around. Sits down, takes a deep breath. Come on, Rob! Oh, what an effort. Great battle from Rob Kearney. Still got time. He's going to try one more time. 40 seconds, but you got to think that Is last it? effort took a lot out Look, of him. Look, you can see the marks on the forearms. Fantastic performance there. Brilliant end to the contest for Rob Kearney. And he is your new event leader, the first man to get past the 400-pound stone. He lifted those first three in less than 20 seconds, got the 400, put that up and over, and just could not get the 420-pound stone to go. But like you said, a great way to finish out his competition. He'll be very pleased. You know, I said earlier that he'd be disappointed with the medley. I think he'll be extremely happy with that performance, though, showing why he deserves to be here. You always want to finish strong in a contest. And there is that 420 pound stone. It's the only one that has yet to be put up and over that 50 inch hit, hitching post. And every athlete we have seen do this event has gone right to the medical team to get you know, treatment for those friction burns on their forearms. I mean, this is a taxing event. It is going to leave a mark literally. These stones. Yeah, these stones are rough, and you can see there from Rob's arms, they're just beat up and cut already. First stone, nice and easy. He was really fast with these feet, the first three stones. Nice technique, straight up to the lap, readjust just, a slight, just slightly. His hands over the stone, drives through the hips. He knew he needed to be quick on those first three, because a quick time would put him ahead of Luke Stoltman. And then he composes himself with this. Excellent lift. Easing the stone, readjusting. Absolutely superb. Enjoying every second of that. Rob Kearney is your event leader. I'm not that cool though. <laughs> Great to see him smiling there. Six athletes left to go, and JF Carone will be the next man to take on this event. Back on track earlier today in the Timber Yoke Log Medley with a fourth place finish there. Luke Stoltman talking things over with Rob Kearney, Jerry Pritchett there as well. One of the best things about Strongman, you know, they all battle hard on the field. These guys, look at this. <laughs> Shivakov doing treatments now. Man of many talents. They are all friends off the field and as hard as they will go in battle. They always want to see their friends do well. You don't get that in many sports these days. 
it really is a great sense of camaraderie out there at these events between the athletes. It is, it's really cool to see. Jeff Caron really gave these fans who've never seen a strongman event before a, a taste of what they're capable of when he deadlifted 926 pounds. I think that's a weight that a lot of people in attendance here have never seen leave the ground. <laughs> and he said it was easy. That's the scary part. Sixth place after four events. And he trails Brian Shaw by just two points. So he'd love to punch into the top five here at the 2021 Rogue Invitational. He can do all five stones here. He's going to give himself a chance. Brian's a great stone lifter, but he's injured. Coming into this event with a hamstring issue. Can JF capitalize? Rob Kearney is the event leader. He got through the 400 pound stone. Here we go, JF Perone, 275 to start. The 300, no problem, and now the 365 pound stone. This is where you've got to start working harder now. He's pacing himself nicely, not rushing, focusing on making sure he gets each stone over. That is up and over, and now to tie Rob Kearney at the 400 pound stone. Laps it well, making use of those long arms, that strong grip, no problem with the 400. Can he do the 420? Can he be the first man to lift this stone? He goes right to work on the 420 pound stone. Two minutes. And he's and got Corone it up to the has it in the lap. Here we and go. And it is the over. First man to lift all five stones. The fireworks go off. JF just looks at the stone, gives it a bad look. 43.51 seconds unofficially. There, we just saw a little smile from him. He was kind of marching away like he had a, an issue with the stone, but he just breaks out a little smile there. And that stone had been sedentary for the entirety of this event until that man got a hold of it and tossed it over that 50-inch hitching post. And J.F. Carone. Perfect way for J.F. to finish the contest. An amazing start, like we said yesterday. Not so good in the middle, but he came back this afternoon and he's finished extremely strong with the stones. He didn't rush, he just made sure of each stone. He didn't try and go off like a rocket, focused on good technique, making sure he was locked into each stone, lapped it nicely, readjusted the hands, and then drove up through the hips. What a vice grip JF has helped him there. Four hundred and twenty pounds, no tacky, pulled up easily. He looked like he could have done an extra stone. Easy, he says. <laughs> <laughs> and there you see the other athletes cheering him on. First man to clear all five stones. And the more men who finish, the more the pressure builds on those top Absolutely. athletes. And that's the exciting thing. We are in for what could be one of the best finishes to a strongman we've seen in a long time. Well, Brian Shaw will be up next, and for more on him, let's go back down to the field with Kiki Dixon. Guys, Brian wants to do this event. He wants to be a part of the show, put on a show, and highlight his hard work. However, he had an injury in the first event with that hamstring, and then later on he tweaked his back in, his, in another. In his heart of hearts, he's a competitor. He wants to get after it. But with both of those injuries and this competition just not going his way, it's going to be a game time decision once he gets on the competition floor. Brian Shaw is a warrior, and he is one of those athletes who absolutely wants to be able to perform for the fans. And it would be a shame if he couldn't finish. Come this far, I'd love to see him finish. What's he thinking? The crowd cheering him on. They want to see him lift. He's 
seen JF put a solid performance in. He's got that two-point lead over JF, so he doesn't need to beat him, but with four incredible athletes to come, he won't want to leave anything to chance. He doesn't have any belts or equipment on Talking things over with the officials. Brian came in in fifth place overall. 22 points, two points up on JF Corone. And with the performance we just saw from Corone, likely that that deficit is going to be erased. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know Four times world's strongest man, one of the absolute greatest to ever do this. And we mentioned earlier, there was a time during the Arnold Strongman Classic, he just dominated that event, first or second for a stretch of five or six years. For a long time, he was the king of the stones. He was the king of strongman for a long time. Still one of the best in the world. 16 years in this sport. These days, almost more importantly, he's one of the best ambassadors of the sport. You know, he's won title after title, but he's bringing new fans to the sport all the time. And that is just as impressive as some of the big achievements he's had as an athlete. Two fourth place finishes so far in this competition, and he's not 100%. That is a heck of an achievement. He was second at World's Strongest Man this year. Second at the Shaw Classic. Competing against the best guys in the world, and he's still hitting podiums. Ryan Shaw up next here in the final event. Ryan Shaw slowly approaching the first stone. Just gives it a rock. Just doesn't shame. have enough. It is a shame, but he got to have his moment on the competition floor and got to hear from the fans, and I know they appreciate the effort that they have seen. incredible and uh, I just want to thank Bill and Katie, Rogue Fitness, everybody that's involved in the production of this event. I mean this is incredible and it's it's uh, really fun for me from where I started in the sport of strongman to see it out in front of this, to see this great venue. It's, it's incredible and thank you to all of you because Because really and truly, without the fans, none of this is possible. It's why all of us work so hard. And uh, I want to say thank you on behalf of myself and the other guys. I know that we all appreciate it so much. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can do it again next year. We love you guys. Thank you. fantastic moment here for Brian Shaw. Not the way he wanted to go out. I, if you had trouble hearing him, he said he really wanted to go lift these stones for the fans, but he really hurt his hamstring on the, on the first event. He's just unable to do it, but then thanking everybody in attendance. Class act, and a look at his response from the crowd for Brian. Brian, 
He wanted to come here. He wanted to win this event. And I'm guessing for a guy like Brian Shaw, obviously he would want to win, but a moment like that probably means just as much to him. Absolutely. Brian and myself started Strongman at the same time. We both remember what this used to be like, competing in front of no one. You know, here he is competing in front of thousands of people for the biggest prize fund there's ever been in a Strongman contest. Thank Rogue there, and rightly so. It's great to see companies like this helping the sport grow. These fans getting involved, coming to support the athletes. You can see he's got a tear in his eye. He's won hundreds of titles, but the impact that he's had on these people watching means a lot to him, and the impact they've had on him keeps him going. After everything he's won, he still wants to come back and win and perform, and we haven't seen the last of Brian Shaw. And that is a great way to get into the top four athletes now who will be the next to take on the Stones. And Mateusz Kieliszkowski will be up first. He's coming off the event win where he was so impressive in that timber yoke and log medley. He has 27 and a half points. He's just a half point back of Alexei Novikov for third place. And it's so interesting to see this leaderboard. You do have the top four guys of the last Three, three to four years, I'd say, in the sport. Lysis, 2019 World Strongest Man. Novikov, 2020 World Strongest Man. Stoltman, 2021 World Strongest Man. And this man here, Kiliuskovsky, the man many people believe is destined to become the World Strongest Man. I'm already excited about the potential future battles that these guys have, but they are still battling today. We do not know Who's going to win this show? Anything can still happen. Kiliuszkowski, you just never know with this man. He is capable of incredible things. And he'll want to put the pressure on Tom Stoltman and Martins Lissis. If you watch that timber yoke and log method, you saw how he just ripped that 360 pound log off the ground and went right over his head without even pausing at the shoulders. That's the kind of power that this man can exert. And he's gonna do that, he's gonna have to do that on this event. He can't really go safe. You know, he can't just take his time. He's gonna have to try and rip and pull every stone up off that ground fast. Get it over the post as quick as possible. Transition quickly to the next. He's really pulled himself back up the leaderboard after a, a terrible first event for him. Didn't register a lift in the elephant bar deadlift because of a a lat issue that he's dealing with, have a, has a tear that he didn't want to aggravate, decided not to put a score on the board, and now here he is with a chance to get into the top three. Only half a point behind Alexei Novikov. Well, he's not attacking it like I thought he might. He's obviously concerned about that lat. Puts one stone over. And he's that is there. going to do it for Kieliszkowski. So 275 is it. And like you said, concerned about the lat, not wanting to aggravate that any further. So one stone is going to be it for Kieliszkowski. And Martin Lietzis might be breathing a sigh of relief because of that. Lises. I know he doesn't want to see someone injured. but Absolutely. Lietzis is going to be extremely happy about that. You know, Kieliszkowski is one of the guys that in top form can really do a fast time on these stones. But... He's maturing as an athlete. He knows he's still not 100%. He wants a big year in 2020. He spoke to, I spoke to him earlier and he said, you know, there's, there's, he's not at his best yet. And we've seen that recovering from four tricep surgeries, coming into this contest with a, with a little bit of a lat issue. I think in the past he would have just pushed on, potentially caused a much bigger issue. Mm -hmm. So he knows he's got through the contest done enough to prove to himself perhaps that he's still capable of competing with the best in the world, won the medley earlier. J.F. Caron still getting his forearms worked on right there by the <laughs> medical team. He's the only man who has cleared this entire ladder. I think J.F. is just, he's just enjoying that now. <laughs> <laughs> he likes being fussed <laughs> over. 43.51 seconds is his time. Rob Kearney got close. He got to the 420 pound stone, just couldn't get that to the lap. He's on the bottom left of your screen. Rob Kearney did a, he put in a great performance on these stones. And after that, 
That big introduction of Kilius Koski there, he was smart. He's thinking about living to, to battle again on another day. Like I said, these four guys, we're going to see some incredible battles over the next few years. Novakov will breathe a sigh of relief there because, like I said, Kilius Koski was only half a point behind. Novakov is five points behind Tom Stoltman, seven points behind Lishis. I think he knows he can't win now. It's an interesting position because if Novakov goes flat out, it still makes the top two interesting. But all he needs to hang on to third is just to lift those two stones. So he does have That's an interesting concern. decision. Here. Yes. What's he going to do? Is he just thinking about holding on to third place? Or does he try and go out and finish with a bang? And maybe help Tom Stoltman out a little bit. Tom's going to want him to go flat out. There's no question about that. This is a unique position to be in. You can't really go up and you can't really go down. So what do you do? I think Novikov goes for it. He's I just think he will too. I think he will too. Only one man has completed this set of stones so far. J.F. Karong with 43.51. Rob Kearney, 400 pound stone. Luke Stockman currently in third. Novikov's been pretty consistent throughout this competition. You saw his best finish uh, in event number two. That was a seared dumbbell ladder. And and that was a still moment. one of the most incredible performances that we have seen in any of the competitions throughout this entire weekend, but has yet to finish lower than sixth in the single event. Sixth in the opening event, and then the, the event win in event two. He got a fourth on the Wheel of Pain, and then a fifth in the last event, the Timber Yoke and Log Medley. Been one of the most impressive athletes of 2021. 2020 World Strongest Man. Didn't perform at his best at the 2021 World Strongest Man. But ever since that show, he's been hitting podium, winning international shows all over the world. 50-inch hitching post that those stones need to go up and over. And Alexei Novikov has a master's degree in international economics, and he works as a business and financial advisor when he's not training and competing. So he has it between the years as well. Absolutely. And on top of all of that, he is the youngest athlete here. Still only 25 years old, and a strong man, that's young. He has a long way to go before he is in his prime as far as the years go. We wonder what he's going to be capable of in a couple of years if he continues this current trajectory that he's on. Absolutely. To clinch third, he just has to lift two stones. The question is, will he go beyond that? and try to clear the entire thing or at least get as close as he Ooh. possibly can. You're competing in the first ever Rogue Invitational. He goes for this. He wants to win another event. He's deciding there where to put that tacky towel. Big decision. <laughs> you can see he wasn't sure where he wanted to leave it. I hope he goes for it. I think he will. Okay. Just two athletes remain after Novikov. We know both of those are going to be going for it. Boom! Two seventy-five up first for Novikov, then three hundred, three sixty-five, four hundred, and finally four twenty. No problem with that 275 stone, now 300 pounds. Look, look a little more comfortable with the 300 pound there. Just getting a feel for these stones. 365 is up and over now to 400. Come on then, Alexei, put on a show for the crowd. Show everyone what you're capable of. Show us why you are the world's strongest man from 2020. Squeezing that stone hard. Doesn't have the long arms of JF Karan. 
And that looks like it's going to be it for Novikov unless he's going to make maybe one more run. He has plenty of time, more than a minute. Second attempt at 400 pounds for Alexei Novikov. Looks like he's got a better Richard for Spain this time. And there it pays off. Now to 420 with about 50 seconds left. Trying to become just a second man to clear this ladder. And this crowd wants to see this stone go over again. 15 seconds, Alexi. 15. 420 pounds for Novikov. No, he's going to leave it there. Thanks, the crowd. So he does go for it. He will lock up at least third place. It's always tough when you're in that no man's land of you, you can't go up you can't come down how much effort I mean, it's hard to motivate yourself but the crowd pushed him on then there's a few stages he was thinking of walking away and he came back adjusted nicely on the 400 pounds got that over and he's had a great contest another podium for this spectacular athlete first three were really not a problem and then he Struggled a little bit with 400, and I think that was the point at 400 where he thought, all right, maybe I'm done, but then he made one more attempt, and up and over it went. He got a better hand position on the second attempt than this 400. You can see, when it was on his lap, it just wasn't quite in the right position. A little bit too there when he kind of pushes those hips back. You can see that stone slipping. He comes back this second time. He's in a stronger position, locked in tighter. That makes such a difference. And the second attempt would pay off in a much better position for Novikov. This time he's tighter on his chest, doesn't slip down. And then he can use those glutes and hips to drive the stone over. He'll be cramping a little there as well. A long weekend for these guys with some brutal events. He would make one attempt at 420, but decided to let it stay put. And now we have the top two athletes left. Tom Stoltman and Martin Lietzis. Stoltman with 35, 33 points, pardon me. Lietzis with 35 points, so just a two-point deficit. Stoltman has got to beat Lietzis by two spots to erase that deficit. Big Tom Stoltman, he's proven to be one of the absolute best stone lifters of all time. This is a different set of stones though, it's not Atlas stones. I don't think it's going to matter. You give this man a stone, he lifts it. Stoltman, your 2021 World's Strongest Man. Follow up that performance with a win here at the Rogue Invitational. He's got to get a little help in the process. Making sure he fully understands the rules. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our next competitor coming in as a second, Lewis second with 33 points and a day in the wheel of pain. This is a common sight for this strong man. Tom Stoltman, ready to do stones, and there by his side, his brother, Luke Stoltman, the best cheerleader you could wish for. You will hear this man cheering his brother on now. And he gets to get a little bit of an intelligence from him as well, as Luke has already gone through this. Absolutely. Luke is Tom's biggest supporter. He's an incredible athlete in his own right. But when Luke cheers, it does motivate you. I've trained with him and when he's got that big booming voice. I think a man that big yelling at me, I'd probably do anything. <laughs> you feel like you can. <laughs> There is no bigger hype man in the game than Luke Stoltman. Tom Stoltman has not finished lower than fifth in this competition, and he won the Wheel of Pain earlier today. His latest result was that third place finish in the Timber Yoke and Log Medley. 
Let's see what he can do on the stone over hitching post. J.F. Carone, the only man who has lifted all five stones. And the albatross is loose. No problem at 275, now to 300. That is easy. 365 up next. Like it's nothing, 400 pounds now. How does he handle the 400 pounds? Straight up to the lap. Easy. We're under 20 seconds for four stones. He's got plenty of time now. Needs to lock on. Up to the lap, no problem. And that is 30 unbelievable. Seconds for all five stones. The fireworks go off again. This is why he is the king of the stones. It doesn't matter what stones you put in front of Tom Stoltman, he lifts them. 30.08 seconds to lift all five stones. He's done everything he can to win this title. He's performed exceptionally well on every single event. Is it gonna be enough? So Martins Leitzies has gotta beat J.F. Carone. Has to clear it and do it in less than 43.51 seconds to clinch first place. What a fantastic effort this was. One motion's the first stone. One motion's the second stone. Well, that's something you see without the stones attacking. You don't see that on natural stones. Look how easily he gets it up to his lap. He's got those long arms to get around the stone, no problem. And I actually think he does this 420 easier than the 400. Just compose himself a little more, gets his hands into the correct position. He could have done a 440, <laughs> a 460, maybe even a 500. No big deal for Tom Stoltman, your defending world's strongest man, and now he will wait and see what Martins Leites will do. And like you said, he has done everything he can to give himself a chance. He's won two events today. He's performed exceptionally well. He's bringing up weaknesses. He is without question one of the strongest men we have ever seen. But so is this man, Martins Leites. Two years out of action almost. The 2019 World Strongest Man winner. And he's the only guy inside the top four coming into this event who hasn't won an event. A he's third in three event, seconds. But the consistency. No weak events when it comes to Martins Leases. The Dragon proving he is still the best. He needs a big performance here. He doesn't need to beat Tom Stoltman for the win, but he does need to beat the five stones by J.F. Curran. And that time is 43.51 seconds. Leachies gets in inside that. He will win the 2021 Rogue Invitational. He knows what he needs to do. He's a very confident athlete. Very, very good at stones himself. And you look back to the last event, the Yoke Log Medley, and the second place finish there. That allowed him to have this advantage. He doesn't finish that high in that event. He doesn't have the luxury of knowing exactly what he needs to do when he steps out there on the competition yeah, floor. His consistency of being at the top or near the top on every single event allows him this luxury. We've got some great fans <laughs> in the arena today. <laughs> the Martins Leites fans. And he appreciates that. Absolutely. And he has just been sitting there for the entirety of this event, thinking about what he's going to do when he gets out there. Now he knows exactly what he needs in order to guarantee himself a victory here at the Rogue Invitation. If I was Martins, I wouldn't even worry too much about Tom's time. I'd be focusing on making sure every stone goes over. No mistakes. Make sure you beat J.F. Caron. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Feel the tension out there. That has never been away. 
Trying to draw some energy here from the crowd. In the last moments before he will take to the starting line and try to get through this event faster than JF Caron. How much time do we have? One minute. One minute. Come on! A lot of this crowd on their feet right now. As the Dragon hopes he can breathe some fire one last time here at the Rogue Invitational and lock up a competition victory. Stoltman brothers, Piotrowski and Jerry Pritchett looking on. Everyone's interested in this. The Dragon wins this contest. What a way to enter yourself back into the strongman world. 43.51 seconds. The second best time from JF Corone. Retease beats that. He's your Rogue Invitational Champion. Here we go. First stone. No problem with 275 on the 300. And he's moving fast. And as well as Tom Stone one motioning them, so is Lises, and he is flying here. Martins Lises gets the 400 to his lap. So easy. Plenty he can of time. Win this event. Right to the 420. Martins Lises. He's on for the win. He on is your ring invitational champion. He saves the best for last. The Dragon oh, Wars 24 45. He finally gets the event win. The other oh, athletes looking around, nodding impressed. You cannot fault what he's done today. Third place, second place, second yeah. place, second place. And then he comes out with the event win on the stones. What an athlete and what a return to strongman for the Dragon Martins Lises. Did not need to win the event, only needed to beat JF Carone. Didn't matter. 24.45 seconds is all it took for Martins Lises to clinch the championship here at the 2021 Rogue Invitational, and this crowd loved every second of it. He has Woo. been a pleasure to watch this Come weekend. I. You can see how popular he is. Everyone pleased to see the Dragon back. The hand is raised. The old rivals give him a hug. What a performance there from Martins Lises. I thought he would do well. I did not expect that. I think you can tell from my reaction I didn't expect that. I was I almost said the last time they went head to head on stones, the 2019 World Strongest Man, Martins was ahead of Tom Stockman. But I thought he'd just focus on doing enough to win. But those first few stones went over so easy. And he just let that confidence ooze out of him. Not one of those stones slowed him down. Yes. Unbelievable performance there. <laughs> wow. Martins Leeds, he's your first ever yeah, Rogue back. Invitational champion, and he does it by winning his first event of the competition. Third place in the Elephant Bar deadlift. Second in the Sear Dumbbell Ladder. Second in the Wheel of Pain. Second in the Timber Yoke and Log Medley. And then, like you said, Laws, best for last wins oh event five. Five different winners of each event as well. The standard is incredible. But this man doesn't have a weakness. And I have a feeling those two are going to be battling for a while, along with a couple of the other young athletes that we saw here compete once they're back to 100%. We have some exciting times ahead in Strongman. There's some Dragon fans there. Yeah, I told you. And are they dressed for Halloween or are they dressed for the Dragon? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes to everything. Unbelievable performance. Let's go down to Kiki Dixon, who is with your 2021 Rogue Invitational Champion. Martins, the last time you competed was in March of 2020. You laid low. You had a bounce back from injury. What does it mean to you to come back and win the Rogue Invitational? It's epic. Uh, Rogue's been one of my favorite companies. I mean, best equipment company like that I uh, could possibly get equipment from, filling up my gym 
and uh, there's been so, such, an, such an epic presence in CrossFit and in the strongman in general. This is the Rogue's first strongman competition that they're actually putting on themselves. When I heard that they were doing this, I was like, I need to be there. I need to be there because I think Rogue has a big future in the strongman sport. So to be here to win the first Rogue strongman show, what an honor. It's been a year, it's been a year and a half since I've competed. Great, great way to come back and get the gears going. Yes, it is. And this was a stacked field. You know, some of these competitors coming in for the first time, competing against one another. What was it like to go up against these guys? Uh, like a lovely reunion. It's good to see the guys again. And I'm really happy with these guys because we got, we got the two previous World's Strongest Man winners here. And I just had to show them that I'm still around. You showed them the dragon is here to say congratulations, Martin. Thank you so much. More to come. More to come. More to come for Martins Leetes, and I can't wait to watch it. Absolutely. So good to see the return of the dragon. The Martins Leetes, your 2021 Rogue Invitational champion, taking time to say hi to the fans and thank them for their support. Take some pictures. And just soak it all in. What a great comeback for Martins Leetes. People talk about ring rust. There was clearly no ring rust at all. And the scary thought is, you think first comp back, he can only get better from this. The confidence will be oozing. The matchups we have to come between a number of these gentlemen. Rogue being involved in Strongman. It's exciting times for the sport. But here we have the 2021 Rogue Invitational Champion, the first ever Rogue Invitational Strongman Champion, Martin Zissi. That is going to do it for the first ever Strongman competition at the Rogue Invitational, and it's Martins Leetes who is your champion. Lawrence, thanks so much for joining us. It was a blast being here with you in the booth and watching this all go down. A lot of fun, hope you guys at home enjoyed it. Martins Leetes is your champion, and that closes out day two of the 2021 Rogue Invitational. The fittest and the strongest putting on a show for those gathered here at the Dell Diamond in Round Rock, Texas. The Wheel of Pain, the Echo Burner, and Concept 2. We watch some legends from old, and we watch some legends continue their legacy. That is it for us here in Round Rock, Texas. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Competition continues tomorrow as we crown the CrossFit champions of this event. We'll see you then. For Lawrence Chalet, I'm Sean Woodland. Thanks for joining us, everybody, at the 2021 Rogue Invitational.